Number 20. Myanmar Mashup A truly bizarre discovery was made at one of the richest deposits of Cretaceous Amber in Myanmar. It's considered to be an extinct wingless wasp found inside amber that dates 100 million years old. The characteristics of several different insects are exhibited by this animal. The strong hind legs are reminiscent of a grasshopper. They would have been useful for jumping or pulling itself out of crevasses into which it had burrowed. The insect also displays the thick abdomen of a cockroach and ant-like antennae. Its face possessed a jagged stinger, not unlike a wasp, and likely used it to attack rival insects. Because the animal is so unique, researchers created an entirely new family for it that includes bees and wasps. Number 19. Giant Snails In terms of giant-sized gastropods, the largest species today is the African land snail. They can grow more than 7 inches long, with a shell diameter of about 3.5 inches. If that's not big enough for you, consider this prehistoric specimen. It lived some 50 million years ago during the Eocene Epoch. The appropriately named C. giganteum was a marine gastropod that could grow some 2 feet long. Lengthwise, it's considered to be one of the biggest species of shelled gastropods that ever lived. Imagine a snail that big in your garden. Its fossil was discovered in France, mainly in the Paris Basin. Number 18. Ticks Ticks are another species that we're all too familiar with today, but also bugged the dinosaurs tens of millions of years ago. A collector in Burma found a lump of amber in 2017 that contained one that appears to be entangled with a feather, and it's teaching scientists about how they lived. The exact species of the animal that the feather came from isn't yet known for certain. Either way, it would have been a great meal for the tick. Another lump of amber had an identical type of parasite in it, but this one had only just finished a meal before it was caught in tree sap. This one was eight times its original size, which means it was probably engorged with the blood of its victim. The finds were some of the first that proved parasitic insects plagued the animals of the Cretaceous period, and if how they behave today is anything to go by, they would almost certainly have fed on all feathered animals of the time, especially dinosaurs. And now for 17, but first be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Number 17. Euphorbaria If you're squeamish about millipedes or centipedes, you can give thanks this creature is extinct. It was similar to today's anthropods, with a big difference. Certain members of its genus could measure over 3 feet long. Modern day centipedes are known to prey on animals as large as bats. What do you think these prehistoric monsters ate for dinner? Number 16. Platyceramus while this list has a lot of insects and other creepy crawlies, this creature is a bit different. And if you like seafood, it might make you more hungry than scared. Yet this humongous prehistoric bivalve was too big to ignore. Platyceramus was one of the largest clams ever discovered. Some of them were nearly 10 feet long, which dwarfs the largest modern clams. The giant clam can grow more than 4.5 feet, with exceptionally large specimens weighing 750 pounds. We couldn't find estimates for the prehistoric clam's weight, but given its size, it must have been a truly massive mollusk. Number 15. Camaraceras Its upper body size can only be estimated, yet this is still regarded as one of the largest cephalopods that ever existed some 470 million years ago and some sources claim it's the largest one of all. Researchers say the animal may have reached 30 feet based on its shell remnants. It had tentacles growing from its cone-like shell that were used for seizing prey. A hard beak at the base of its tentacles would have cracked open the prey's shell or exoskeleton. They're related to modern squids, cuttlefish and octopuses. Number 14. Meganura they're related to present-day dragonflies and would have resembled them as well. Existing some 300 million years ago, Meganura is a genus that contains species with some frightening dimensions. Some of them were the size of birds, with wingspans exceeding 28 inches. It boggles the mind to imagine a dragonfly large enough to prey on animals like frogs or squirrels. But their diet consisted mainly of other insects. Fossils of these creatures have been found in France and England. 
And even though they were scary big, they weren't the biggest known flying insects. That one is coming up a little later. Number 13. Pulmonoscorpius. Many scorpions are considered to be small, deadly, and carry a fearsome reputation. But this prehistoric monster measured about 30 inches long and would have looked like a real nightmare. They lived around 345 million years ago and their sting may have been powerful enough to take down smaller mammals or reptiles. Number 12. Fleas. If you've ever been around fleas, you'll know how annoying they can be. But imagine them being 10 times the size with an equally as big bite and thirst for blood. And that's what dinosaurs had to face on a daily basis. Researchers who discovered these prehistoric monsters described their bite as being like a hypodermic needle going into the skin because of their supersized proboscis they used to feed. They were found as fossils in Inner Mongolia, and while looking very much like a soft bodied flea, are thought to be the ancestors of a long extinct flea lineage. As well as having a vicious straw to drink blood through, they also had long claws that they could use to hold on tightly to the scales of their prey to ensure they could finish their meal before being shaken off. Number 11. The trouble with trilobites. These are marine anthropods that have scavenged in the oceans for hundreds of millions of years. By most accounts, they were among the most successful forms of early animal life. On average, they could reach about 4 inches. But the largest known species is identified as Irex. That animal reached 28 inches long and 16 inches wide. With its armoured shell, compound eyes and segmented body, it might have resembled today's horseshoe crab even though they're not closely related. The closest living relatives to trilobites are animals like sea spiders, which is scary enough on their own. Number 10. Pam de Lurion. Some of the scariest animal jaws in history may have belonged to this prehistoric creature. Paleontologists say its fossils have been found in China and date back some 520 million years. They belong to a class of worm-like creatures distinguished by their mouths filled with circlets of plates and choppers. Some have compared it to the Sarlacc beast from Star Wars. But this critter would have been a real-life nightmare. Its head was lined with large spikes behind which was its mouth. The mouth had three layers of teeth and plates that protruded out in a pyramid-like shape. Prey was speared by the animal's spikes while the mouth sprang open to feed. At around three feet long, it wasn't nearly as big as the Sarlacc, but sometimes smaller is scarier. Number 9. The Platypus of Crabs Scientists discovered a new species of crab in 2019 that was unlike anything they'd ever seen. Dating back some 95 million years, the prehistoric animal had a shrimp-like mouth, the eyes of a lava, claws like a crab, and a lobster's carapace. Its bizarre anatomical mashup earned it the nickname the platypus of crabs. Due to its unusual legs, scientists think it was probably a water dweller and spent more time swimming than crawling on the ground. Another major departure from normal crab features was this animal's size. Many of them were no bigger than a US quarter. Number 8. Scorpion Spiders Around 100 million years ago, an arachnid existed that could nearly pass as a spider and scorpion hybrid. Paleobiologists found the creature's remains preserved in Burmese amber in Myanmar. The specimen had a body length of 2.5mm, while its tail measured about 3mm. But this small critter presented some big questions for experts. Their whip-like tails are similar to those of the present-day whip scorpion, which are not true scorpions either. But these ancient mysterious arachnids did possess several traits typical of true spiders, including spinnerets to create silk. So these newly unearthed animals could be an example of a Lazarus taxon with no fossil record, or they might have belonged to an extinct group that shared some similar origins as spiders. In any case, the arachnids could prove that spider-like creatures with tails existed alongside true spiders some 200 million years ago. Number 7. Giant Shrimp Its official name is Anomalocaris, but it's likely better known as the Giant Abnormal Shrimp. It lived more than 500 million years ago and was first described in 1892. Back in its day, there were evidently a lot of these critters swimming in the world's oceans. That's because their fossils have been found widely distributed all about the globe. 
It's thought to have been a ferocious predator, mainly feeding on trilobites or extinct marine anthropods. A Nomilocurus would have made for a truly giant shrimp. Number 6. Hallucigenia This animal is known from fossils found in China and Canada. Its odd name is a reference to its hallucinatory appearance. They were tubular creatures about 1.4 inches long, with up to 8 pairs of legs that each had a pair of claws. Another 3 sets of pincers were located behind their legs. They had no sensory organs like eyes or ears, and while they were most often considered to be a type of worm, some experts think they're more like anthropods. Number 5. Meganeuropsis These enormous specimens existed more than 315 million years ago, and while they resemble dragonflies, they're only distant relatives. Researchers typically refer to them as griffinflies, or large, primitive, predatory insects. This genus contains the largest known flying insect ever, beating out the previously mentioned Meganeura. The enormous Meganeuropsis permiana was a species with a wingspan of nearly 30 inches across and body length of about 19 inches. That's far greater than today's largest dragonfly, which has a wingspan of 7.5 inches. Along with their great size, these creatures had powerful toothed jaws and would have been highly maneuverable in the air. Number 4. Manipulator While we might assume a prehistoric cockroach was a huge version of today's insect, such is not the case here. But even though the Manipulator M was a mere 4.5mm long, it would still give you a scare. It had a freely rotating head, an elongated neck, and unusually long legs that were used for chasing prey or ambushing it. Experts say it probably hunted at night as it skittered around nearly 100 million years ago. Even though it's identified as a cockroach, its closest living relative today is the praying mantis. Number 3. Arthropleura Today's largest species of millipede grows more than 15 inches long. The largest centipede grows more than 12 inches long. No doubt many of us think they're scary enough to begin with. But can you imagine either of those animals measuring several feet long? That's horror movie stuff. Arthropleura was an ancestor of both these invertebrates. And experts say the largest of them could grow 8 feet long or more. It could also measure several feet wide, so its size alone was enough to discourage predators. But despite its massive size, fossilised evidence has revealed it can move quickly to swerve, avoiding rocks and trees on the forest floor. Even though it appeared fearsome enough to be a predator itself, the creature was actually herbivorous. Researchers say it's the largest species of land invertebrate known to date. Number 2. Monster Sea Scorpions one might quibble that J. Coleopterus wasn't really a sea scorpion because it probably lived in freshwater environments. But there's no arguing about how frightening this beast would have been. Alive some 390 million years ago, J. Renani measured some 8.5 feet and is the largest anthropod yet to be discovered. That is double the height of some people. It possessed heavy, robust pincers more than 18 inches long and was probably an apex predator. Even though they're the largest anthropods, these animals had a lightweight build, so they weren't necessarily the heaviest of the lot, but they were extremely agile and highly maneuverable. Number 1. Mosquitoes Mosquitoes are one of the largest causes of human fatalities throughout the world because of the diseases that they carry, with some estimates suggesting as many as 400,000 people die each year because of malaria alone. Their annoyance isn't just a human issue, and a discovery announced in early 2019 suggests that their impact hasn't changed much in a hundred million years, even if the species have. They have been equally annoying to all species with blood for millions of years. Found in amber in Myanmar, researchers have identified a new type of anopheline, which is the family of mosquitoes that carry malaria. At the time it was caught in tree sap, it would have been living in a tropical forest surrounded by velociraptors and T. rexes, and would have fed on birds, small mammals, and reptiles of all sizes. They definitely would have been bothering the dinosaurs in the same way they do us, and researchers are now looking at whether they could have been vectors for disease spreading. Some believe the true reason for the extinction of the dinosaurs was a plague or an illness, and it's quite possible that mosquitoes were the ones responsible for spreading it.
Number 9. Proboscis Monkey You might think that the proboscis monkey's ginormous, strangely shaped nose is unattractive. But the species females certainly don't think so. In fact, their noses are an integral part of these monkeys' mating rituals. The way this works is that their noses block their mouths, acting as a sort of echo chamber that serves to louden their natural calls. When the ladies hear this, they swoon, and other monkeys in the species know that they've been beat. Before finding mates, however, these monkeys live among other bachelors, separate from the female population. Their noses are without a doubt their most striking feature, but the proboscis monkey has a few other notable features. For one thing, they're the best swimmers of all primates in the world. You can look up videos of them jumping into the water in awkward flops for yourself. Their hands and feet are webbed, which helps them to outswim crocodiles, one of their primary predators. Their tails are also nearly as long as their bodies. Number 8. Hummingbird Moth the hummingbird moth is so big that many people who see them flying around their gardens actually mistake them for hummingbirds. Have you ever seen a moth that big? Well, that's not the only similarity these gigantic moths share with hummingbirds. They also move in a very similar manner. This moth will fly in front of flowers and remain there by flapping their wings rapidly, so fast that they even sound out a low hum, just like hummingbirds. Through convergent evolution, hummingbird moths earned all of these similarities with hummingbirds. Its diet is also similar to that of the hummingbird. A lot of the time, hummingbirds eat flowers that have petals that are shaped like tubes. And wouldn't you know it, so does the hummingbird moth. There are a lot of hummingbird moths throughout the world. In total, there are four species of them in North America. You've probably actually seen one of them before in real life, but you might have just mistook it for the bird. Number 7. Pyrenean Desmond If you thought the platypus was weird, then the Pyrenean Desmond is sure to surprise even further. It looks a lot like a mix between a mole and a platypus. While the feet at the front are small, its back feet are large and webbed. They're also really tiny, and they tend to grow up to the size of a hamster on a good day. And a ton of that size is devoted to their huge noses. Their bodies are well adapted to the rivers and marshes where they live. They're excellent swimmers because of their feet, and their noses are great at sniffing out prey. We know that they're nocturnal, and that they eat tiny river invertebrates. But other than that, we don't know much else. Because of their size, they're really hard to find. And to add insult to injury, they're also mostly nocturnal, so you won't be able to just come upon one on an everyday hike. Interestingly, in ancient times, there was a ton of creatures like the Desmond, but as evolutionary time passed, their numbers dwindled. The Desmonds are the end of a long lineage of such creatures, and researchers are hoping that studying them will help us understand how such creatures thrived, and how we can best protect their descendants. And now for number 7, but first be sure to subscribe if you're new here, and let me know your favourite animal in the comments below. Number 6. Leafy Sea Dragon If you don't look for too long, you might mistake the leafy sea dragon for a patch of sea flora, but you would be woefully mistaken. In fact, these creatures are far livelier than a bed of foliage, although their appearance does enable them to hide among all the coral reefs where they tend to reside. Since they look a lot like leaves, they can simply conceal themselves next to algae, and none of their predators have any idea. They likely developed this camouflage ability because they're not particularly adept at swimming. Thus, blending in was of paramount importance in surviving encounters with predators. They pretty much eat plankton alone, but they sometimes attack and eat small prey. Because they have such big heads and tiny mouths, they can suck in their prey effortlessly. You might think that the leafy sea dragon is a close cousin to the seahorse, but they're more akin to a pipefish than anything else. You can see some of these for yourself at many aquariums, but they're a threatened species due to being randomly caught in fishing nets while looking for other fish. Divers also collect them for private aquariums, but they're a very delicate animal and often die in a fish tank. Given their strange appearance, they're sure to amaze when you see one up close. Have you ever seen one before? Let me know down below. Number 5. Panda Crocodile these crocodiles may look like a strange hybrid between pandas and crocs, but don't be fooled. 
It's not a separate species, but rather just a few crocodiles painted like pandas. This is all part of a strange craze where various kinds of animals are painted to look like pandas. This is because pandas are something of a rarity, so painting an animal to look like one helps bring more people to view them. I know, a bit random, right? Here's how this particular brand of panda lookalike came into being. When the panda Li Ping was born at the Chiang Mai Zoo, located around the north of Thailand, onlookers came in droves to see the new panda. However, most of the other exhibits were receiving dwindling views. Because of that, all the other exhibits were trying to outdo one another to get attendance back up to par, hence the painted crocodiles. At the Samut Prakan Crocodile Farm in Taiban, Thailand, officials there also painted crocodiles to attract people to their croc farm, which contains over 60,000 crocodiles. They were placed in the disabled crocodile section, which contains many strange kinds of crocs. This is all a PR stunt and a way to capitalize on the amount of buzz generated by a newborn panda. Man, humans can be random. Number four, softshell turtle. Softshell turtles do have shells, but if you felt them, you wouldn't think much of it. That's because their shells are smooth and leathery, more like an animal hide than a thick armor we expect of most turtles. Their shells don't have the kind of scales, called epidermal scutes, that sea turtles have, for instance. But for all that, there are tons of softshell turtles in the world today. In fact, the spiny softshell turtle rivals all other species of turtles in terms of sheer population in North America. They're also known by their strangely long necks. These come in handy though. Many softshell turtles hang out in shallow waters and mud, and they can extend their long necks just above the surface of the water to keep breathing. Without their distinctive armor, how do these turtles make a living? Actually, they're hunters. Seemingly unfazed by their lack of protection, they seek out their prey and trap them. Finally, softshell turtles also have a distinctive flat shape. While this may seem odd at first glance, it actually helps them swim quite fast. Did you know there were turtles without hard shells? It's strange to think, but there are a lot of them out there. Number three, blobfish. The aptly named blobfish isn't going to win a beauty contest anytime soon. When scientists on the Norfans expedition in the northwestern waters of New England first discovered this fish in 2003, they named it Mr. Blobby, and for good reason. This fish was never meant to leave the deep sea where it lives. Above the water, its skin is so blobby because 4,000 feet below the sea, the pressure would make it look like just a regular fish. In contrast to other fish, blobfishes don't have air bladders that enable most fish to stay buoyant. It would get crushed in deep waters. For support, the blobfish relies on water itself, its body being less dense than the water around it. Because of these facts, the blobfish tend to remain stationary. So they just float along, waiting for smaller things to pass them by. When that happens, they open their mouths and inhale them in. Moving doesn't even help them catch their prey, so why bother? Sounds like a pretty easy life. It probably doesn't even care that everyone seems to think it's the ugliest fish in the world. You can even see Mr. Blobby for yourself at the Australian Museum Collection. Number two, star-nosed mole. The star-nosed mole is well known and arguably infamous for the strange star-shaped organ on their snout. It might look like something out of a horror movie, but it actually serves as a vital tool for this mole. It's the most sensitive touching sensory organ of every animal on Earth. It contains over 100,000 nerve fibers. That's more than five times the amount in our hands. In an area even tinier than the tip of a finger, it's so touchy that we haven't even found the threshold beneath which these fibers light up. Like other moles, the star-nosed mole is pretty much blind. But weirdly enough, the spot at the center of their starry appendants, called the touch fovea, operates a lot like our visual system does, neurologically speaking. The center seems to focus on things in much the same way as our eyes. This would mean that natural selection can create analogous kinds of sensory organs, even when they're operating from different senses like smell and touch. 
The star-nosed mole spends its life underground and in the water, using its big claws to dig around looking for prey. When they swim underwater, they're even able to smell by blowing bubbles up at things and sucking them back up. They're able to tell what's in front of them. This is the only indication of any animal that can smell underwater. They also eat faster than every mammal in the world. It seems that this strange looking creature holds a lot of mysteries. Number 1. Sparkle Muffin and Skeletorus Peacock Spiders A few years ago, Madeline Gerard, a grad student at UC Berkeley, discovered a couple new species of peacock spiders in Queensland, Australia. Although their official titles are Maritus Jacatus, she named one of them Sparkle Muffin, based on its beautiful coloration or blue and red stripes along its belly and the other, Skeletorus, based on the white marks against its black body. Peacock spiders are known for their bright and lively colour schemes, but these new discoveries knock the ones we already knew out of the water. While Sparkle Muffin looks a lot like formerly discovered peacock spiders, with the dial raised to 11, Skeletorus is distinctive, making researchers think that these spiders are a diverse group. However, peacock spiders have distinctive features aside from their looks alone. For one thing, they're jumping spiders, which means they don't spin webs to capture prey, but rather hunt them. But most notably, they engage in strange mating rituals involving a complicated dance. When trying to mate, male peacock spiders show a part of their body called the fan, which is a flap that has intricate designs and stripes on it. In addition to this, they'll raise one of their legs and show the female, and all of this happens super fast. When one researcher, Jurgen Otto, saw a Skeletorus mating dance, he was astounded at the energy that this spider displayed, flexing and dancing to its heart's content. Number 8. Prince the Irish Terrier we know that all dogs are good boys, but Prince the Irish Terrier was such a good boy that he followed his owner into war. This is probably the oldest cast of a dog reuniting with its owner on this list. Prince lived a peaceful life in Butterfant, Ireland, with his owner James Brown and his wife. But when James went off to World War I in September 1914, Prince was devastated. And after James left, his wife and Prince moved to Hammersmith district of London. However, around November, she was shocked to find that Prince was nowhere in sight. Experiencing intense dismay, she wrote to her husband on the front lines about Prince's disappearance. But, amazingly, Brown wasn't phased by his wife's letter. Because by the time it had arrived, Prince had already found Private Brown deep in the trenches of Armentier. He was keeping Brown and his battalion in good company. How exactly they found one another among the chaos remains something of a mystery. Some say that Brown spotted a pup that looked like Prince, but when he got closer, he saw that it was his actual dog. Others say that different members of his battalion saw Prince and notified Private Brown immediately. But regardless of what happened, Prince would have had to swim the English Channel to find his owner. We can't be sure of every detail in the story due to lax reporting standards at the time, but if entirely true, it represents a remarkable connection between man and animal. And now for number 7, but first be sure to share your best pet stories in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell for more stories like these. Number 7. Willow the Cat Willow the Cat returned home five years after escaping, but that's not the most extraordinary thing about Willow's journey back home. The craziest thing is where she was found. Although Willow the Cat comes from Colorado, they discovered her walking around the busy streets of Manhattan. That's over a thousand miles away from home. Willow must have had a wild ride across the country. Willow lived in Boulder, Colorado with her parents Jamie and Chris Squires and their three children. When a few workers left their house's door open and Willow escaped, while they tried to look around for Willow, they were in dismay, hoping that she would come back herself. But after five long years of waiting, they just assumed that Willow must have been gone for good. Maybe she'd made a life for herself as a tiny mountain lion in the Rockies of Colorado. Who knows? But then, out of nowhere, Jamie and Chris got a call that Willow had been recovered in the fairway of New York City. 
How could Willow have travelled as far as the Big Apple? No one really knows for sure, but veterinarians were able to analyse her microchip and definitely confirm that it was indeed Willow. Willow and her family went on a victory tour to NYC to interview with the Today Show. Even Michael Bloomberg chimed in, saying that Willow must have wanted to use one of her nine lives up in New York City. Number 6. Opie the Horse Opie the Horse was returned to its rightful owner after 10 long years of waiting. Opie's story has tons of twists and turns, so let me get right into it. Opie was Michelle Poole's horse. When she needed back surgery, she got her dad to watch Opie instead of paying pricey fees for boarding. Her father kept Opie behind a wire fence, but then somebody came and cut the fence open, stealing Opie away from its family. A horse like Opie would likely go for $15,000 on the market. Even though Michelle immediately filed the report, there was no news for 10 years. However, eventually she got the call. They had found Opie under mysterious circumstances. They discovered Opie over 200 miles away from his home. He was initially found by a pastor who claimed to have found Opie just walking along the road. And luckily, he just so happened to have a trailer in which to store him. Did this pastor then try to return Opie? Nope. Instead, he put an ad up on Craigslist to sell the horse. But then one woman recognised Opie's picture from the list of lost horses and contacted local authorities. Thankfully, Michelle got Opie back after all that time. Law enforcement investigated the pastor's home for evidence of thievery, but found nothing. However, the pastor's story is without a doubt curious, and it seems like something fishy must have been going on. Number 5. Sophie Tucker the Cattle Dog Sophie Tucker is an Australian cattle dog that survived alone on an island for five months, only to be reunited with her owners. This just proves how resilient animals can be in the face of adversity. When Jane and Dave Griffith were sailing with their cattle dog Sophie Tucker off the shores of Queensland, Australia, they ran into some serious weather. While trying to keep the boat upright, they were horrified to see that Sophie Tucker had gone overboard. While Jane and Dave thought all was lost, Sophie Tucker was busy proving that she was one of the toughest dogs in the world. Once she went overboard, she swam around 5 kilometers in harsh weather to the nearby deserted St. Bees Island, where she fended for herself for 5 months. There are tons of wild goats on St. Bees Island, and Sophie Tucker was able to hunt them for the few months that she was away. After hearing news of a dog hunting goats on St. Bees, rangers came to the island, captured Sophie Tucker, and returned her to her family. Jane and Dave were stunned. Sophie Tucker had been an indoor dog her entire life, but was able to live all on her own. But cattle dogs are indeed quite strong, and Sophie Tucker was no weakling. Do you think your dog has what it takes to make it in the wild? Let me know below. Number 4. Manuela the Tortoise Manuela the Tortoise survived inside a box for over 30 years. In a suburban home in Rio de Janeiro around 1982, the Almeida family couldn't locate their pet tortoise Manuela and assumed that some builders at their house doing renovations had simply left the door open for Manuela to walk through. But then, over 30 years later, when Leandro Almeida was clearing storage space, he came to a shocking discovery. Manuela somehow was alive and had been locked away the entire time. Talking to Globo, he said, I put the box on the pavement for the rubbish men to collect, and a neighbour said, You're not throwing out the turtle as well, are you? I looked and saw her. At that moment, I turned white. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. To be honest, I can't either. How could something like this have ever happened? Experts say that Manuela likely survived by eating up tiny insects like termites and flies and drank condensation to stay hydrated. Many turtles have been reported as surviving without food for around two to three years, but that's nothing on Manuela's timestamp of 30 years. So if you ever happen to have had a tortoise go missing, be careful when you're throwing out old boxes. Because you might just find that your old pet is more resilient than you could have ever imagined. Number 3. Nigel the Parrot For years, Nigel the Parrot lived with Darren Chick, a Brit. In fact, after living with him for so long, Nigel even developed a British accent when he talked. But this African grey parrot flew away from his home in Southern California in 2010, and for four years Darren thought that all hope was lost. But when someone found Nigel four years after his departure, 
Veterinarians were able to return Nigel back to Darren, but surprisingly, Nigel now spoke a different accent. What happened on Nigel's voyage? As it turns out, Nigel had been living with another family, the Smiths, for that entire time. They bought him from a yard sale after he'd gone missing, and Nigel spent most of his time with Ruben Hernandez, a member of the Smith family and recent widower who renamed Nigel to Morgan. Over the years that Nigel spent with Reuben, he developed his new accent. So when Nigel returned back home to Darren after years of being gone, he knew something was up based on the bird's new accent. Of course, this is an incredible story, so it was on primetime news where Reuben's granddaughter was watching. She reached out to Darren and explained to him what had happened while Nigel was away. This nearly brought a tear to Darren's eyes and he returned Nigel back to the Smiths, recognising that his home was now with them. A touching end to an amazing story. Number 2. Giggle Blizzard the Cat When any cat runs away, their owners are naturally devastated and hope to find them soon. Giggle Blizzard was gone for 11 days after escaping during a playdate. Her owner Tracy Steger must have been worried. Giggle Blizzard might be the best name of any pet on this list. Honestly, I'm thinking it might just be the best name for anything in general. But Giggle Blizzard has a story that's far more charged than this light-hearted name would suggest. Tracy put out calls for Giggle Blizzard on Craigslist, but to no avail. But, incredibly, Giggle Blizzard returned on the evening of Thanksgiving. While trying to enjoy the holiday with friends and family, she heard some distinctive meowing from outside. And when she looked, she was amazed to discover that Giggle Blizzard had returned home. However, with some substantial battle scars. In fact, Giggle Blizzard had to pull himself indoors. Sadly, both of her cat's hind legs were broken. They had been crushed by a car. This means that Giggle Blizzard must have had rough travels on her way back home, but she made it nonetheless. I think that definitely counts as one of her nine lives. And thankfully, a local veterinarian was able to perform some amazing surgery, and Giggle Blizzard is now back in business. Take a look at these pictures of Tracy's cat in recovery. Pretty incredible that Giggle Blizzard was able to make it back home safe, even if there were some huge physical challenges along the way. Number 1. Reckless the dog. Even though they thought he was long gone, Reckless the dog had made it through a big storm and was reunited with his family after a year and a half. How does something like this happen? Well, in 2012, Hurricane Sandy ravaged the New Jersey coastline, leaving immense wreckage in its wake. Sadly, Chuck and Alicia James experienced the brunt of Sandy's trajectory and their house experienced significant damage. It also broke their fence, and their terrier pit bull mix, Reckless, went running. Chuck and Alicia were devastated, and they wanted more than anything to find Reckless. But after a year and a half, all of their prospects seemed hopeless. So when their daughter turned 10 years old, they decided it was about time to find another pup for her. So they went to their local Monmouth County SPCA. When they went there, however, they met a dog named Lucas who looked an awful lot like Reckless. When Lucas saw the couple, he started jumping in the air. That's when they knew that this was Reckless after all. And they confirmed the fact based on a distinctive scar on his head. So, even after all this time and through one of the worst storms on record, Reckless was able to reunite with his family. I would say that's a much better birthday present. Not a new dog, but not having to say goodbye to an old one. Thanks again for watching. Do you have any stories of pets finding their way back home? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like this video and click that notification bell to stay up to date on all our coolest new videos. See you next time.